Lord saying through this willing vessel here is what I prayed he had prepared your hearts to receive and that you would be open to it because I think it'll bless you, right? But you have, you have to come expecting, right? Right? So I thank you, Pastor, for uh, giving me the opportunity to share what uh, the Lord has put on my heart and what I have had the blessing of sharing with uh, some of the men in, on Sunday mornings. And uh, I appreciate your indulgence. Uh, I'm not a professional speaker. Uh, I just like to share whatever the Lord's put on my mind. And uh, sometimes it comes across and sometimes we could do better. But um, hopefully the Holy Spirit will be leading this whole thing and we'll get, I know we're going to get something out of it. Okay. All right. Would you mind, Mike? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I want to talk tonight about truth. There are things that are true about God, and there are things that are true about us, right? And we don't always grasp, thank you, Mike, the full meaning, the full comprehension of that. And a few things kind of prompted my, my thinking along these lines, and we were reading a few Sundays back um, through Philippians, and we came across Philippians 4.8. And uh, Frank or Willie, would you mind putting that up there, please? Philippians 4.8, and that's where we're going to start tonight. So, and if you don't mind, we'll use the... King James Version tonight. Um, I had asked for the new King James, but they don't got it. So we'll go with the old King James. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever, whatever is pure, <laughs> whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if anything be of good virtue, and if, um, and if anything, if there be any praise, think on these things, okay? So the thought occurred to me, well, what are these things? I mean, it's nice to, you know, enumerate it, talk about it. Think about these things here. Okay, give me some examples. What are they? And the Lord said, you want to read and, and think and ponder and meditate on things that are true and noble and worthy of praise and lovely and et cetera, et cetera? There you go. There it is. Ponder it. Meditate on it. Get into it. And what's the opposite of that? Think on lies. Yeah. Think on uh, what's unjust, what's impure, Gossip. what's not noble, yeah. Ig ignoble. There's, uh, we say that word in French for the little French lesson. Ignoble, ignoble, we say in French. That's a harsh, harsh word. In our language, if you ever hear someone say, that person is ignoble, it's, it's treacherous, it's traitorous, it's scandalous, it's um, just terrible. It, it's an awful, awful word. So, you want to meditate on those things, just turn on your TV. Just turn on the TV. Don't spend too much time on this stuff. It's all around us. It doesn't take any effort to focus and meditate on the opposite of this. It's all around us. It's in us. It's, we're in it constantly on a daily basis. 
which is why Paul calls us to not be conformed to the world. Romans 12, 2, Willie. You know, we, know, we all know this, right? Do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do we renew our mind? Back to Philippians 4, 8. Meditate on those things. See, when we get into the word more and more, the more and more it becomes part of us. And now I know, Pastor, I'm preaching to the choir here tonight. <laughs> That's why you all are here, okay? So this is an encouragement to us that we, this, we're on the right path. We need to be more and more in God's word, meditating on those things that are true, etc. So what is conforming? Don't be conformed to this world. What's conforming? Divorce? Sickness? Lack? Despondency? Despair? Corruption? We don't want to be conformed to those things. So in order not to be conformed to what's around us, then our minds have to be renewed. Which is why Paul says, put on the whole armor of God, including what? The helmet of, did you ever think about that? The helmet, the helmet of salvation. Why the helmet? Because it all starts up here. Right? What we think about as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So let's examine what is true and what is truth. Willie, can you pull up uh, Psalms 19.9, please? 19.9. Fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. His judgments. Okay, Psalm 119.30. His judgments are true. And I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. So the psalmist tells us, first of all, his judgments are true. Then he comes and tells us, his judgments I have laid before me. This is the Old Testament version of what we just read in Philippians 4.8. Right? Right? Meditate on these things. I've laid them before me. What your judgments have come down to me, those are the things I lay before me and I meditate on these. Question for you, by the way. Why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come? Save the sinners. Save you. Just you? <laughs> Who else? Why did Jesus come? I mean, that's a good question, isn't it? Sheila? Huh? So we can have life? Okay. What else? When he came to die on the cross. Came to die on the cross. So we could have everlasting life. Take away the sins of the world. 
to bring truth. Thank you. Uh, Willie, John 18, 37. This is Jesus speaking to Pontius Pilate. All right? Who says to him, Art thou a king? And Jesus answers, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause was, excuse me, for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And just as an aside, because I, I had to share this with the, with the men, go to 38. And remember, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth Heareth my voice. And Pilate says to him, This is like a comic moment in, in this tragic time where Jesus is being accused. And he's told him, Those who know the truth hear my voice. Yet a clue, Pilate. <laughs> this is. You know, there's these moments sometimes you read the word and it just kind of slaps you. <laughs> this was that moment for me. So, he came to bear witness to the truth, right? Now, how do we know the truth? John 8.32, Willie. 8.32. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's interesting, the, new, the, the King James uses make you free. And we can debate this, because I don't know, there's, there's versions, I think the Amplified or uh, some of the other versions say set you free. Set you free is like if you're in a trap, you're caught in a trap, someone comes and releases you, and they set you free. But once you are made free, you're free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, right? And we are free indeed. We're made free. It doesn't matter if I'm locked up. It doesn't matter if I'm in a trap. I'm still free, right? So now go to John 16, 13, please. 16, 1, 6, 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. Who's he hearing from? God the Father. Kind of matches along with what Jesus told us. I do nothing but what I see my Father do. And the Holy Spirit speaks what he is told, whatsoever he shall hear from God the Father. He shall speak, and he will show you things to come. This, um, this goes along so well. with Romans 4.17, which says what? God 
spoke of things that were not as though they were. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. The Holy Spirit shall speak what he hears and show us the things to come. We are made in God's image, are we not? Therefore, what we speak should be what we expect. God's truth that's already been laid out for us, we're to speak that. That's, words have power. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? Proverbs 18, 21. So God calls us, he's already given us everything we need. We have to claim it. We have to stand on the word. We have to claim the promise. Whatever it is we want, he's already provided. Now it's up to us to step up and claim it. So if there's sickness in our lives, if there's disease in our lives, if there's relationship problems in our lives, if there's lack in our lives, whatever the issues may be, We're called upon to speak. Speak to your mountain. Right? We speak directly to the thing. I've heard it said, God responds, doesn't respond to need. He responds to faith. So when we're speaking what we want into the future, we're speaking from faith. And that's the truth. That's the truth. I mean, remember that? <laughs> that he wants us to grab a hold of. You know how important it is for the Holy Spirit to lead us? Willie, go to Matthew 28, 16 and 17, please. S 16 and 17. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. Then the eleven dis disciples went away into Galilee. Okay, now Matthew 28, this is after the crucifixion, okay? This is the last chapter in the book of Matthew. Christ is resurrected. The 11 disciples, minus Matthias, went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. The 11 disciples, is not saying multitudes, all kinds of people, the 11 plus however many there were that were sent out when Jesus sent them out two by two. This is 11. The Bible is very clear. 11 means 11. Disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Okay, 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted? <laughs> some doubted? Brothers and sisters, these are the 11 men that spent three years with Christ Jesus, 
walking with him, praying with him, breaking bread with him, seeing his miracles, experiencing his glory, being taught by him. But some doubted. There was, I mean, I read that. I'm, I'm, I've read it, I don't know how many times before. I just, you know, went right over it. And this one time I read it, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said, the disciples, they doubted? I mean, I don't understand Thomas, doubting Thomas, right? I got to stick my finger in his hand in his side, and I got to see the holes in his, his hands and feet. I'm not talking about Thomas. I'm talking about the rest of these guys. Maybe Thomas was amongst them. I can't believe Thomas was one of the ones, who's doubt, ones who doubted. Remember what he said? My God and my Lord, after he finally saw him and touched him, he was the one who was supposed to be doubting. Not the others that had seen Jesus walk through the wall in a locked room after his resurrection. So I said, what's up? Is it, what is up with this? What is up with this? They doubted? So then I wonder, well, would I have doubted? See, what made the difference? What did Jesus say? The Spirit shall lead you into the truth. So what made the difference? We all know what happened. The disciples did go out, right? Just read the book of Acts, right? What made the difference between Matthew 28 and the book of Acts? Setting aside the rest of the other three Gospels. What made the... Right. Starts with a big capital P. Pentecost. See, this is this to me stood out so vividly because it says, see the disciples? They doubted. What made the difference? The Holy Spirit. They had not received the Spirit that had come down to empower them and to release into them the truth and bring into remembrance to them all that Jesus had said and done. And they understood that was truth. They understood why Jesus came and why he had to suffer and die on that cross. And until we get the Holy Spirit in us, we could read the Bible all day long. And not get the truth. It's just a bunch of words. But when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, truth is revealed. And he shows us the things that are to come. So, what's true about us? What's true about God and what's true about us? Well, when you read what's true about us, then you understand what's true about God and how much of a loving, 
Father and God we serve. Let me share with you some things that are true about us. Willie, did you know you were God's son? Do you know you have his grace, Mike? Dina, you know you have his redemption? Pastor, you know you have every spiritual blessing in Christ? Miss Annie, do you know you have the mind of Christ? Elaine, you know that God's not given you a spirit of timidity. But what kind of a spirit he's given us? Of power. No. Amen. Do you know, Yolanda, that you have dominion? You have dominion over where you stand. You have dominion over the earth. He's given us that. You know, David, we have, you have freedom. You've been set free. You've been set free from sin and the law of death. Linda, do you know that you have the Holy Spirit within you? Why? Because God's freely given it to us? Naomi? Do you know that you have been credited with righteousness? That's true. You know, Sheila, you have a labor to do. Jesus has given you that. Alyssa, do you know you have authority? You have authority under Christ, not for tearing down, but for building up. Troy, what do you have that you did not receive from God? What do we have that we did not receive? We come into the world a naked, helpless baby. And by the way, we go out pretty much the same way. <laughs> and everything in between is what God has, has sent us, what God has given us, what God has blessed us with, what we have expected, what we have claimed, and what we have received. Every good and perfect gift. Miss Shirley, do you know that you have an inheritance? You have an inheritance of all good things. Do you know, Miss Justine, that you have access to the throne of grace. Amen? Amen. Do you know, Mary, that you have a kingdom? You will inherit a kingdom. And it cannot be shaken. Do we all know what God has prepared for those who love him? Can you imagine? The word says, no mind has, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Woo! <laughs> you can't even think of what he's prepared. I don't care how wild a dreamer you are. You can't even conceive what he's prepared for you. Yes, yes. 
Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Each man or woman has his own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. That's in 1 Corinthians 7.7. 7. And now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So, we're going to do a little exercise. Which of you need healing? Okay. Which of you are struggling with any kind of fear? Like the fear of raising your hand. See, there are things in our lives, and again, I'm going back to renewing your mind. So important. We don't even know sometimes, we don't even realize what we're thinking. Because it's so ingrained in us. We've been thinking like that since, since we were Addison's age. And so we're just used to thinking that way. There's a fear that we have that it, I've experienced this just lately. And this has been a help to me to do this, okay? that I didn't realize I had. It, I, you wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a fear. I would have told you this is just who I am. This is how I act. This is how I react. But God showed me, he said, that's a fear. You're not willing to step out because deep down you're afraid of what it's going to cost you and what you're going to have to do. So we're either full of faith or full of fear. And I want to encourage us tonight. I would pray that this would be a time for deliverance from that. We're all brothers and sisters here. We all know each other. There's nothing to hold us back. I mean, if we can't do it as a family here, where are we going to do it? God wants to do a work here. He wants to deliver whoever needs to be delivered. And see, sometimes we don't even realize we need that deliverance. We're just going along and kind of having a realization that things maybe aren't as great as they could be, but I'll just keep doing what I'm doing because I'm comfortable doing that. God, Jesus doesn't want us there. He calls us to step out. He told us, he said, hey, in this life you will have trials and tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. The world, remember, that Paul tells us, don't be conformed to it because it's holding you down. It's not what, it's not God's best. It's not what he has for you. 
each and every one of us here tonight can step up and step out bigger and greater than anything we've ever done before whether you're 84 or just four doesn't matter who you are every one of us including myself here we need some kind of deliverance we need some strengthening from the Holy Spirit we need freedom from whatever is got us into this wrong thinking Ken Hagen says wrong thinking leads to wrong believing and wrong believing leads to wrong acting so it's going back to thoughts emotions and so we've got to renew our minds so miss annie needs healing and i'm believing that healing is here tonight Anyone else believing that? I got two people. Raise their hands. Three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Do we all agree? <laughs> okay. So we're going to pray for Miss Annie. And, and it doesn't have to be me. It could be any of us here. We pray for you, Miss Annie, okay, to just receive. Okay? It's not complicated. You have the faith, you believe, then you should receive. And if we need deliverance tonight, we can have deliverance. All it is is people praying in faith to receive it. Amen? The truth, that's the truth. What God and the Holy Spirit are showing us tonight. So we will pray. But I've got a few things here I want to share with you. <clears throat> this is from our Charles Caps. Anybody, any of you all knows Charles Caps, right? Yes. Isn't he good? He's like, the man is amazing. Or he was. He's, passed, he's with the Lord now. He's got a whole series of these little booklets, and I just love them. I just devour them. Willie, if you know, you know Charles Caps. You will, my friend. You will. If you are, uh, let's say you are fighting worry and fear, okay, you stand on the word, and who has worry and fear of any kind? Alyssa, stand up. Anybody else? Any kind of worry or fear whatsoever? Okay, Diana? Is it Diana or? Dana. Dana, I'm sorry. Okay. Dana, Mary, Alyssa. Okay. Now, repeat after me, okay? I am the body of Christ. And Satan has no power over me. For I overcome evil with good. I will fear no evil. For you are with me, Lord. Your word and your spirit, they comfort me. I am far from oppression. And fear does not come near me. I am delivered from the evils of this present world. For it is the will of God. Amen? Amen. Now, remember those words and speak them every day. Stand on that promise. Stand on those words. And if you want, I can, I'll be happy to share this with you later so you can write down the scriptures, okay? How are we doing on time, Pastor? I don't want to overstay my welcome.
Okay. All right. So we're good. We're gonna have. We're, we'll quit when it's time for the midnight snack, right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, how many of us have material needs of any kind? Material needs. Okay, Naomi, Yolanda, stand up. Alyssa, Ms. Justine, anyone else? The rest of you have all your material needs met. Okay. If you don't, stand up in faith to receive your blessings. Not for me. I, don't, I left my wallet in the car, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, now, repeat after me. Christ has redeemed me, has redeemed me. from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed me from poverty. Christ has redeemed me from sickness. Christ has redeemed me from spiritual death. I have given, and it is given to me good measure, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. With what measure I use, it is measured back to me. I sow bountifully, therefore I reap bountifully. I give cheerfully, and my God has made all grace abound toward me. And I have all sufficiency in all things, and have abundance for every good work. There is no lack for my God, supplies all of my needs, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 We could go on and on. And I have more, but I don't want to belabor the point. I think you get the meaning. You get what I'm saying. You get what the Holy Spirit wants to share with you tonight. It's about knowing God's word, who God is, who we are, okay? Let's not forget who we are. And when our little mind up there starts saying, ah, you can't do this, or ah, I guess you're just going to have to fail again, or, well, you know, it's no surprise you're not getting any results. I mean, look at you. Just a little old me. What can I do? Anybody ever had little thoughts like that? Kind of just twittering around? <clears throat> when we start thinking like that, it's time to start praying like it isn't. And I'm putting myself first out there. Because we all, correct me if I'm wrong, we all struggle with this. Every man, I'm not talking about the ladies, every man has to deal with poor self-image. We all have to overcome that. We all have to overcome the things in our childhood, in our past, that the devil just loves to bring back to our minds, doesn't he? 
And so we need to be strong. We need to stand on the word of God. Amen? So I'd like to um, close out with, uh, reading, with a reading from Psalms, Willie. And then we're going to pray. I want to pray specifically for individuals, whoever you are, Miss Annie, others that want to come up here and doesn't have to be me, Pastor, Willie, Mike, whoever of, wants to pray for folks. I want to make that open tonight to those who need to receive that prayer. So, I'm sorry, yeah, Psalm 26, verses 1 through 5. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons. Not, I have not sat with vain persons. Stop there for a second. Do not be conformed to this world. I'm not saying we can't be salt and light. What I am saying is, who are we hanging with? I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Do not be conformed to this world, but allow yourself to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? Thank you, Father God, for this word that has gone out tonight. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that has ministered to us as we have studied your word, as we have delved into scripture, as we have read the words of Jesus, your son, our savior, thank you for your Holy Spirit that is alive in us, that draws us to you, that reveals your truth to us. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your spirit that draws us closer to you, that reveals to us what you have for us, what you have done for us, and what you have in store for us. Father, we thank you that you have equipped us to live victorious lives. And we thank you we have great expectations for what is in front of us, what is to come, what is before us. And Father, let not our past, whatever may be in it, taint our vision of our futures. Help us to go forward with a clean heart meditating on what is true, what is noble, what is of honest report, what is righteous, what is pure, and all that your holy word contains. And Father, we go forth now, and I pray your blessing on this congregation. I pray your blessing, your anointing on every man, 
woman and child in this church, in this congregation. Right now, Father, I just pray the Holy Spirit to come down and anoint each and every one of us. Father, that we may live in the conviction of who we are, that we may stand on that word, that we may go forth boldly, proclaiming who you are, proclaiming your truth in our, in our lives. Father, that our lives may become a testimony to those around us that you have placed there for us to reach out to. We pray it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen.